Hiya. We are in a different office today. Yeah. Bit weird, is isn't it? Very strange, my first time in this sort of vehicle. It's so cool. This is a Scania S500. It's owned by Conway Bailey, uh, who I do a bit of driving for. I'm the only vegetarian that hauls bacon for yeah. them. Yeah, so thanks for them for letting us borrow the lorry today. Absolutely. Uh, this is based in Victoria. We're down in Cornwall, and we're using part of uh, the old A30. Yeah, which is closed off to the public. It's closed road because they're doing loads of road works. So anything that we do in this video is on a closed road. Absolutely. Um, so the reason we're sat in the truck today is because obviously I do a little bit of this driving stuff and we wanted to highlight how dangerous trucks are and how little appreciation car drivers, motorcyclists, pedestrians, all that cyclists have about a truck. Now we've got two policemen with us who've actually never sat in trucks before and we've just demonstrated to them what you can and cannot see and they both walked away going oh my god hmm. you know they dealt with fatalities and you know unless you've actually done this it's hard to understand so we're sat in the cab so first things first oh first things first what is the size of the lorry so this is like an average lorry articulated truck whatever you call it okay and um, that somebody would see on the road this is an articulated truck so it has a cab, you know, a cab at the front and a trailer behind. The trailer's about 40 foot. So the whole thing is probably, I don't know, 40, 48 feet long, okay. something like that, 50 foot long. It's hard because trailers are different sizes and all this, but it's a three axle trailer. So it's a big, long trailer. What we wanted to demonstrate, I'm just going to open the windows a little bit because we're going to get Hot and steamy. steamy. Um, what we wanted to demonstrate is just how little view you have in the truck. Now you'll see, there are six mirrors. So we got one up there looking down down the passenger door, isn't it? Yep. And then you've got the two wing mirrors on the left and you've got one that is slightly angled so you can see the floor a little bit more and then this one. Yep. And then what have you got on that side? At the front of the, uh, at the, front of the uh, truck there we've got... That mirror that looks down at the very front of your cab. Yep. Yeah. And then what have you got over that Over side? here we've got another upper mirror and a lower mirror. And that's the view out of the cab. Okay, so you can see that I've just adjusted my seat now. I'll hand that back to you. Okay. I've just adjusted my seat to how a lot of drivers drive it. Yeah. Uh, drive, okay, so my review out of the front is very restricted. We've got uh, halves one of the policemen who's with us, he's what, six foot two, six foot? Yeah, quite a tall guy. Yeah, and he was stood nearly six feet away from the front of the truck, can't see him. Well, do you want me to jump out and show? You can do, yeah. Yeah. So I'll jump out. This mountaineering and stuff, all in the aid, <laughs> all in the aid of rider cab. All right, so Toby is now stood there. How far away are you, Toby? I'm stood an arm's length. I'm touching your bonnet with my arm. Okay, extended. so he's just standing in front of the truck an arm's length away. So you want to get back in? Yeah. Well, what about this side? Can you see me here? Okay, I can just about see your head there. I can see you in the mirror. Can you see me here? I can see you there, but if you were to step another two feet back, I know you're going to go into the hedge. Okay. There. I can't see you in any of the mirrors on the side of the truck. And that's scary because I'm probably four and a half feet away from your door. So what? I'll have to translate that. Cause Probably Tony's... about four and a half feet. You can see me waving. Yeah. About four and a half feet directly 90 degrees away from your cab door. Now that position you're in is where a cyclist or a motorcyclist would be. Yeah. Typically. And if I open the door, I'll show you exactly where I was. That's where I was stood. So you're just over a door width away from the... Um... Yeah, just a... a door width and an, an extended arm away from the actual lorry. And I can't see you in the mirror. Yeah. That's frightening, isn't and it? And that's where a lot of these people sit, isn't it? On the dual carriageways, motorways and stuff. This is where they tend to creep up and just sit thinking, I'm quite, kind of safe. You get motorcyclists who sit there a yeah. lot. A lot. <sighs> just traverse Everest. <laughs> Sponsored by Conwell Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> So, that's a little bit frightening. It is a little bit frightening because 
now that Mark's shown you, we've got other things to show you when we get out as to what is actually behind the vehicle. So what can you what can you see from where you are at the moment? I can't see anything at the moment, but before we get into that, what okay. I wanted to talk about is a truck like this is limited to 56 miles an hour in the UK, okay? And then the speed limit for a truck like this is actually 60 miles an hour. Okay. But people don't realize that their speedos are calibrated every two years. So wow. when you see a truck going past and saying that road works and the road works are say 50 miles an hour and he seems to be going faster than everybody else, his speedo is telling him he's, do he's doing 50. All right. Now, the reason I'm explaining that is not because I'm saying, you know, they drive fast. We get good drivers, we get bad drivers There's in all walks of life. But this is a calibrated speedo, so he's probably doing the right speed. Now, everyone goes, oh, you know, truck drivers break the rules and all the rest of it. Okay. In the uh, taco at the top here, if I just switch the ignition on, you see there's a taco up here. He puts a card in there, which records everything he does with regards to driving. I when remember he... when I was um, doing my job 20 years ago, how boring it was because there used to be paper circles <laughs> and you yeah. had to get them out and inspect them at the side of the road. So it's, it's the size of a, a credit card. It, it's... Um, can't even show you one now. It's the size of a, a credit card. It fits in there, but it stores information for a year. Wow. And if you've caught, if you're caught pulled over by uh, the DVLA or, um, you know, VOSA or somebody like that, or the police, they can look at that card and any infringements you've had on top of the one they've pulled you over for, potentially, you can be uh, penalised for. Yeah. That's frightening. Within the statutes of the law and the exactly. limitations of time and stuff. So... This is a very, very heavy, reg heavily regulated uh, industry to be in. When you're driving along, this truck is plated for 44 tonnes. That's a huge weight. And when it's got 44 tonnes in, it'll get up to 56 miles an hour really quite quickly. And it's in cruise control and all that kind of stuff. And they stop reasonably, qu reasonably quick, quickly. But like I tell people, riding a, driving a truck... And driving a motorbike are exactly the same. You have to plan everything. You have to plan for people who pull in front of you. You know, when you're in traffic and they're just like, there's a gap and I pull in. They don't realise that you're not going to stop very quickly. All right? And the potential for hitting, rear-ending somebody is phenomenal. Now, all these trucks have got cameras on them. Okay, all the new trucks. Yeah, I noticed that down in the footwell, but when you get in the cameras and all sorts. There you go. I don't know whether we'll be able to see it. It's a very shiny screen. But... Yeah, but... There's front side cameras, front and rear facing cameras, wow. but there's nothing on the trailer. Right, okay. Because the trailers get changed all the time. So that's not that's there for the driver. When you put your left hand indicator on, the little camera opens up on the left hand side so you can see what's coming. But that's also there to prove in an accident that what you did potentially as a driver or as a car driver was in, it was unsafe or whatever. Mm. So you know, people don't make mistakes unless they... And this is the thing, isn't it? You know, dash cams are brilliant on bikes and cars and lorries. But don't forget that they should affect the way that you drive. They should be something you think, I'm always being watched. Because they're not only about showing that somebody's pulled out in front of you. They're also about showing how bad your driving is if it comes oh, to yeah, a, something really bad. And as a, dri as a truck driver, you're open for criticism all the time. Yeah. You know? But that's just the way it is. So what are, the point I want to get across to people is if you pull in front of a truck and it, rightly, rightly they get annoyed, you know, they might flash the lights or you sound the horn, all right? It's not because they're necessarily angry. It's because they're warning you that what you've done is potentially dangerous, you know? They're not going to be able to stop like a car can. They just can't do it. Mm. And people pull in front of them and they go, oh, you know, it's, it's like we, we live in a dream world. And this car. thing called brake checking that you see on these, oh. you know, how silly are people that in tiny little boxes, <laughs> wafer thin compared to a 40 You have no truck. idea how many times it happens. But thing that really grates on a lot of people is when you're driving along with your carriageway and you have a slip road that comes on, okay, and every, you know, people move out and let other people on, that isn't a requirement of the law it's a give way it's isn't a it? give way okay so the way you should think you should approach a slip road is if you've got a truck he's doing 56 miles an hour he can't go any faster and he can only slow down now if he's got a manual truck if he slows down that might be four gear changes for him because some of those trucks have 24 gears wow. <laughs> right? mind blown on a flat road that might be four or five gear changes for yeah. him okay so in a car or a motorbike 
rather than just cruising along at 50 miles an hour and expecting him to pull out, which he can't because there's traffic going a lot faster behind him, you've got an option in a car or a bike. You can either go faster than him or you can slow down and slip in behind him. Okay, so just consider that when you're yeah. when you're driving. But let's get on to what we can see. If you want to pass me, the, or if you turn first of all and look out of your mirror, okay, from your you, perspective, from from my perspective as a driver, yeah, what can you see? Out, what can I see out of there? Well, uh, behind us, as far as I can see, even sat in the passenger side, which you'd think would be a better advantage point for the mirrors. I was really surprised that I can just about see the end of your trailer. <laughs> The front of the trailer with that white line is really pronounced there, but the end of the trailer, it could be in oblivion, especially this weather, it's gray clouds, it mixes in with the color of the, um, the trailer. But as far as I can see, there is absolutely nothing behind you. And rightly so too. So we're looking now on the driver's mirrors, okay? And you can see there, we're on a perfectly straight road and we can't see anything behind us. We can just see the edge of the trailer in the bottom mirror there but you can't see the back of the trailer. No. Should we get out? I think we ought to, because I think you might be quite surprised with what you might be able to find. <laughs> okay. What is hidden behind Mark's trailer? Who knows? Today? Right, see, so are you gonna get out as well? I can Talk do. about it? I can do. So, this is the big reveal. Not only has Mark climbed out of his massive truck, ooh-er. Uh, ooh uh. Now, if we go right alongside your lorry and turn, there's still nothing there, is the mark? No. Now, if we go on the other side, you'll see as well. So if we go round to the passenger side, there's still nothing there, is there? Absolutely nothing. So let's go round the driver's side and go out into the middle of the road a little bit. Oh, not only are you being hailed to stop by this lovely <laughs> police car, by the way, Vision Zero are here and we're working with them. Um, and then we've got a police support vehicle van behind that. And then we've got Barney, the RTP behind that. How far is that away? The, the critical thing about that is from the mirrors on the truck to the mirror of the actual the police car yeah. is 56 metres. 56 metres. Now you think how far, how close people drive to drive to trucks, the backs of trucks. Yeah. Motorcyclists sit on the outside edge trying to overtake them. Okay, how dangerous is that? We talk about the two second mm. rule, only a fool would break the two second rule. Okay, that's inside two seconds. Yeah, isn't it, it is. For most speeds. Yeah. It right. is. And if you think where my bike is, where Barney's back there, I don't want to zoom in and zoom out because it might take the um, definition away from the video, but Barney's right at the back there. Now, if I was on Barney and there was an overtake here and I could overtake all of you because you're going really slow, I'd be out right out here on this line here, out yep. here. But that would give me a view out. But now I'm potentially being lost from these massive mirrors, aren't I? Now, so the police car is 56 metres away from me. Yeah. Okay. The van is another 30 metres beyond that. Yeah. So we're talking 86, 86 metres, give or take. And you're another 30 metres beyond that. Yeah. So we're talking 120 metres, something, yeah. something in the region. And I that. can only just, when I park the bike up, because we very carefully manoeuvred our vehicles into position, I can only just see the edges of your mirrors or your mirrors. At 120 metres. Yeah. And you're on the edge. You're not yeah. in the centre line of the truck. No. So as a truck driver, you spend your whole life looking at shadows because that's all you can see behind you. And yeah. it's not surprising that when a car suddenly appears out of nowhere, you know, it's just like, it's quite a frightening thing. So that's something to be aware of. It's really scary, isn't it? It <laughs> really is. It is. So we're like in a, t in a typical overtaking situation here on a, a normal country road. Yeah, hence the normal country road that again is closed, just in case anybody says we're being dangerous. It's a but you'll road. notice we've got the arrows coming in. Yeah. And you've got a, uh, a solid white line this side, broken white line on the other side. Yeah. This is typically where cars try to overtake you. Yeah. I've got to get past the truck. Yeah. Okay, now we've got the police car parked. And if I show you the mirrors, in my top mirror, I've got all of him. In the rear mirror, I've just got his back door. And if I look out of the car, you'll see that he's right alongside my door. Just bring the camera down a little bit so that it can see the, that's it, bottom of the door. So we get some sort of reference in our heads as to where okay. that is. So there he is in the top mirror. See the whole of him. In the bottom mirror, I've just got his back, his, his back door and half his windscreen. And then if I look here, his bonnet is right alongside. And if I open the door, 
you'll see the whole car. Yeah. If you lean out, now that we've moved the vehicle, moved this vehicle, can you see the van any more clear? Uh, okay, so if I'm looking in the, mir in the mirror, we've actually put the, ve the, the truck in a proper aspect on the road, so it's not sat in the centre of the road. And I can just, I mean, it's difficult to see on this camera, I can just see the right-hand side of the, um, the driver's side of the van. Wow. Can you see the bike? I can't see the bike at all. And that's how we just disappear into the background. And that's a white bike. You know, a white bike on a road. Nothing to stand out, but nothing not to stand out. I'm, I'm not obviously not sat on there, but you can't see it. Can't see it at all. It's that's a bit scary, scary that, isn't it? What we're going to try and do here is re replicate driving along a country lane. If you show us the front of the road there, Dave. So what we got here typically is I'm doing 50 miles an hour in a truck. Uh, I've got something that's over, going to overtake me. It'll be Toby on his bike. I can't see that. But we are about 30 metres away from a solid white line on my side of the road and a broken line on the other side of the road. That means in the UK that on the white line on this side of the road is stopping me from overtaking, so I can't overtake. But anything on the other side can overtake. Okay, now we're about 30 metres away from that. Imagine I'm doing 50, because that's the limit for this vehicle on this road. A car or a motorbike could be doing 60 miles an hour, because that's the national speed limit. What typically happens is they do late overtakes here. They've seen the arrows that say you can get in, but they're desperate to get past the truck. So they'll do an overtake where they'll end up going past into the solid white line and then we'll see what happens when we come in the other way and Toby will be explaining what he's doing so if you want to film that way Dave Toby will then be coming past overtaking and uh, we'll switch over to Toby talking I'm going to demonstrate that I'm riding along and this road we should always ride or drive to the distance we can see to be clear on our own side of the road and be prepared to stop on that side so I'm going to overtake this lorry's there, I've got more than enough room. I've kind of got fixated on the lorry and I've missed the keep, keep in bollards. And I'm now up at 50, 60. I'm now breaking the law because I'm crossing the road and look at that. Look what's in that, in that gap. Now that is a standard transit van, Ford transit van. And see how that was lost. Now we get on the road sometimes very fixated about overtaking vehicles. Now I was trying to demonstrate being fixated overtaking that 44 tonner and that vehicle, mimicking the fact that they're moving. So you'll have to pretend that they're moving. As they're moving, I'm intent on getting past that vehicle. I've kind of missed the fact that even though I can see to the top of the road, I've missed the fact that there's a dip. And there isn't always a dip sign telling you that there is a dip. And how can I lose sight of a transit van? If I pull that down, how can I lose sight of a transit van in there when I'm looking back and I've just come past that lorry? Now you can see that these lines here, these lines, if I was traveling this way, this means I shouldn't overtake, it's a solid white line. This side is broken. So from the top of the hill, from here, the reason that you can overtake is because now I've got the view all the way up the top of the hill. I can now overtake if it's safe to do so. But because I got fixated behind that lorry, I was completely in my rights to overtake there. But the reason the white line starts at the top of the hill is because there is a dip that isn't signposted. And that dip would have led me at 60 miles an hour, because this is a 60 mile an hour road, right into the path of that van, doing 60 miles an hour. And bear in mind, I'm on the wrong side of that solid white line. So not only am I breaking the road traffic law, putting myself up for fines and stuff, I'm actually being really dangerous. So I'm heading now for that 60 mile an hour van that's traveling at 60 miles an hour, hence 120 mile an hour impact. And me and Barney are gonna be toast. And what we wanted to do was highlight the fact that these lines are there for a reason. Don't get fixated behind a vehicle to overtake because you need to be able to see every bit of tarmac. If you can't see every bit of tarmac, including that dip that goes up, then the overtake is 100% off. Right, so what we're replicating now is we're driving along a country lane, 50 miles an hour, normal road. Ahead of us, 
Uh, about 250 meters away, we've got a solid white line, broken white line. And if you can see the mirrors, we're just going to explain how typically what happens when you've got a motorcyclist overtaking you before he gets to the white line. Okay, and how difficult it is to see them. So we're just starting off now. Toby's behind us. He's about 50 meters behind us, but I can't see him. So I still can't see him. We're now getting to probably 80 meters before the end of the, the start of the white line. I can just see him now on the outside. He's coming past. I can still see him. I can still see him in all my mirrors, but I can't see him now, just as he appears at my door. So hopefully this has shown you where the blind spots are from a unique position of a driver of a heavy goods vehicle. Remember they're 44 tonnes, they can't stop very quickly. Um, but as a motorcyclist, a driver of a car, a van, or indeed another lorry, it's really important to know where those blind spots are so you don't keep putting yourself in those blind spots. So if you've liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, all that jazz, and we'll see you in the next video.